I've got 95 problems and the Astros are one. Jose Altuve, he's red hot. Spencer Getty, he was a lot better in this in this um game. So what happened? Where did offense go? Why did the Astros get beat so bad? We'll talk about it on this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. Yainel Diaz, this is Locked On Astros. to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we update you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on X at Eric Talkstros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros your team every day. Guys, thank you for making a Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen. Thank you for making us part of your day, daily routine, whether the Astros win or lose. And uh, while if you want some more Astros talk and some, uh, you got to get get your frustration out go and check out michael connor with the postcast as well he does a great job over there going over all the plays and all the big um things from each game and we're, we're going over the big issues with the locked on astros podcast and today's episode is brought to you by monopoly go is the game not going quite the way you want it to go and you you have some free time during the astros game well why don't you check out monopoly go i admit it i have competitive side and um, I'm a big fan of Monopoly Go. Uh, the mo mobile hit is a uh, twist on the classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download the Monopoly Go app now free on the App Store or Google Play. So I know that probably Jim Crane thought that he had a Monopoly on the AL West. He thought that he had all the right moves. He probably thought he had Park Place, Boardwalk, everything um, going his way to potentially go back to another world series. But did he put all his money into park place or boardwalk, which was Josh Shader instead of getting a whole bunch of arms, did he put all the money into one person and Josh Shader, how many save opportunities has he had Two. he's been, he's had two save opportunities. He's got one save and the rest of the time, he's just been thrown into situations which are not save opportunities. He's a closer. He's supposed to come in and close. And we saw this with Ryan Presley last year. He, uh, When you're a closer, you're supposed to come in and close games. And so he gave up. This really brought me back between – I didn't go to the game, but I can hear the tomahawk chop going to oh and everything – and then the, the single, 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 single in the ninth inning. This brought back the 2021 World Series. This brought back the uh, 2000, um, what was it, 2015 ALD, ALDS versus Royals. Game three where the Royals just kept on getting single after single to beat the Astros. And it was just frustrating. I don't know why they left Josh Hader in in that situation. And why they brought in Brandon Belak, but I guess at that um, at that moment, it'd be like that. Why bring in Ryan Presley? Because you've already burnt Hater. Hater threw how many pitches? Twenty two pitches. You're probably not going to bring him in tomorrow's game. This is back to back days that you've used him. Uh, this is a pitcher that really has not pitched in back to back days uh, before. So this is a situation that he's probably had in his career, but he looks not that good this year. His fastball just looks like it's batting practice fastball. I mean, it's still got the, it's still got the life. It still looks like it's, it has potential, but for some reason that it's not fooling anybody. He's got a what? 939 ERA at this point. Okay. He gave up four runs on four hits. Five walks. He finally got a strikeout in that inning, but he allowed the first five hitters to reach base. It was basically a merry-go-round. Why do we 
why recently are pitchers doing this? It's just, I mean, Spencer Arigetti, we'll talk about him in a second. He was a lot better. But, geez, what's going on recently with our pitchers? And I don't think it's the um, pitching. It's not Miller or Murphy. I don't really think it's anything they're doing wrong. I just think that the Astros just don't have all the eggs in a the basket they need. They let all those eggs leave last year in Nares, Maton, Stanek. Stanek is, the, I believe he's the closer for the, or if he's not the closer, he's getting some saves for the, the Mariners right now. So you don't, you don't know what you have until you lose them. And that's what the Astros are realizing right now. You don't know what you have, what you're missing. You're missing 200 innings from these guys. And now you have a whole bunch of guys. Seth Martinez, he's doing great. Taylor Scott, he's doing great. Poor Brandon Belak, he's being thrown in all these situations. Montero is, to his credit, for the money the Astros are paying, he's having a good season. But your guys that are supposed to be doing good are not doing good. Abreu had a good inning, uh, I mean, inning and, and one-third today. But his ERA is 6.75. Hader is 9.39. Presley is he's bringing his ERA down a little bit, but he's not doing so good re recently. So you have the nobodies, no offense, Rafael Montero, but you have the nobodies who are doing good right now. And then you have the guys that you're paying the big bucks for. Or I guess Brian Brady's not getting, he hasn't got his payday yet. But they're the ones that are struggling. The guys that you're counting on, the big three-headed beasts that you're supposed to have, they're the ones struggling. And there's something wrong with the construction of this team. The Astros can't seem to find the right batting order. Alex Bregman came back. And now I'm not going to say that Alex Bregman coming back uh, screwed things up because he had two hits today, and, and including RBI. So I'm not going to say that he came back. But Pena dropped all the way down from hitting, what, uh, fifth to hitting um, seventh. So after helping the Astros offense, he's dropped down. So it's just like baseball is baseball. It's so weird. You don't know what's going to happen from game to game. So the Astros are now 6-12. Six 6-12. and, 12. Six and 12. It's still... I know y'all are going to hate me for saying this. It's still early. They could still recover. They could still go on this winning streak that Dana Brown keeps on promising us. But how? Justin Verlander is probably going to come back pretty soon. That gives you some hope. Some hope. Bromer Valdez is supposed to be coming back fairly soon. You got to get some better starts from your um, your rotation. But the Astro, the construction of the Astros team, when you go into the offseason saying Jake Myers is our guy, nothing against Jake Myers. He's ha had some great games. But Jake Myers is not the answer. Chaz McCormick, I could see putting all your eggs in his basket after the season he had last year. But you can't just put all your eggs in. I guess this episode is sponsored by eggs, but you can't put all the eggs in the Jake Myers basket, especially when you have what uh little Perfido Pedro Leone is finally having that, that breakout season in triple a you got to do something. There's got to be something at some point. And so um, I know uh, Jake is raking more than uh, Chaz at this moment, but I just think that the lineup construction and I'm not going to, I know there's a lot of people uh, blaming Yiner Diaz for the pitching issues. They're saying that the Astros need a veteran catcher and Diaz needs to be the DH. I don't think that's the issue. The Astros pitchers are just not executing. You have a bunch of young pitchers who are not, really comfortable or ready for this situation. Spencer Arigetti, to his credit, he could have folded today like he did against the Royals, but he didn't. So we'll talk about that. And Jose Altuve, how hot is Jose Altuve? We'll talk about that in a second. But guys, keep the hope up. This, this, this team has too much talent on it. 
I'm not going to give up. You don't give up as well. And we'll talk about Jose Altuve in a second. Hey, guys, if you're um, a little bored watching Astros game and you're tired of uh, maybe a ninth inning, Josh Hader's giving up run after run after run, why don't you go ahead and play Monopoly Go? Uh, we've all been there, either as fan, it's halftime, or scoreboard's not looking good, you're feeling low, not sure how your team could pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, it's time to get back in game, pull up some bait heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. You're going to go ahead and play Monopoly Go. Let's It lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's a, it's a Monopoly game that you love, but it's on your phone. You don't have to have all the little pieces and everything and all the cards, and you have to have some might be the banker. It's all on your phone. So play on countless um, dynamic Monopoly boards. You can make your fun, friends go bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball and charge other players rents for their iconic for your iconic properties. You can even work with your uh, friends to crack open, open the community chest and in tournaments to get the extra rewards and climb to the leaderboards. So right now, go to your app store and uh, download the Monopoly Go app, now free on the App Store or Google Play. And guys, I know um, the Braves are a hot ticket. I don't know if you're there today, but uh, the there's a lot of Braves fans. We need Astros fans there. I'm tired of hearing the tomahawk chop and the oh, 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 whatever. So why don't you head down to Minute Maid Park? You can wait until you're on the way there. You could park your car and just look on game time and find some uh, some pretty cheap seats there. So uh, go ahead and get the, the great last minute deals. You could save up to 60% off uh, by buying last minute tickets for sports, comedy, uh, theater, etc. Like if you want to go to the concert, that's at Minute Maid Park. I'm sure you get some good tickets there. They have flash deals. You could save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select uh, seats ahead of the game or the event. They have zone deals. You can um, just pick a zone. All in pricing. That's a good thing about game um, time is you can look, um, you, can, you can see the price that you're going to pay. Unlike the other apps where they're like, oh, surprise, you have to pay all these fees. So it's the lowest price guaranteed or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying the tickets with game time, download the game time app and create an account and use the code locked on MLB for 20% off your first ticket. You're going to go ahead and um, go to um, game time the app and use the code locked on MLB. All right, guys, Jose Altuve, just like game time, just like playing Monopoly Go while um, Josh Hader is cratering. Um, but Jose Altuve has been hot. I don't know if y'all realize this, but he's had how many three-hits game in the past few days? He's had four three-hit games in the past five games. So that is 12 hits in the past five games. So he is currently batting 403 out in 72 at bats. This is probably the best start that Jose Altuve has had in his career. And he doesn't look like he's going to slow down anytime soon. So why can't the, the rest of the team just like, I know the offense was great versus the Rangers. The Astros did some uh, pretty good offense there, but Altuve has been hot. Yes, he has been hot. Uh, he had one day where he didn't get one hit. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's been pretty hot. Uh, too bad. He can't get that uh, four hit game there, but uh, he's been, uh, he's had four, three hit games in the last five games. He's leading the league in hits right now. The Astros before today's game were leading the league in hits with 166. The Astros were second with in terms of WRC plus to the Braves with 130 to the Braves, 131. The Astros, believe it or not, they have the offense. The offense is not capitalizing on getting on base. They're not capitalizing with the risk. When you have runner on second base, how are you going to get them home? That's what the Astros are not doing. 
is that lineup construction? Um, is that Alvarez batting second versus Alvarez batting fourth? I don't think so. But I think it's just a matter of finding out who needs to bat where. Honestly, I think that Pena, the way he's been hitting this year, he needs to be batting uh, further up in the lineup. Um, I know Abreu's had some better at bats recently, but he needs to be at the bottom of the lineup and just find something that works. If the Alvarez batting second is not working, why don't you try him batting fourth? See what happens. If this is not working, the Astros are six and 12. I'm not saying that Alvarez batting second is hurting the Astros because the Astros offense is um, obviously they're getting the hits, but if you want to start driving the runs, try something different. Okay. Uh, my lineup, I would say with the way that Pena has been hitting, I would put Pena hitting second. I would have um, Altuve, Pena, maybe shoes. I would probably keep Tucker batting third, then put Alvarez batting fourth, Bregman batting fifth. Yiner Diaz batting six, and then whoever after that. It, it, as long as Pena uh, keeps on hitting. It's not about protecting Pena anymore. He looks m much more confident out there. So why not? Try something different. What we're doing is not working. Uh, try Bring somebody up. John Singleton, great guy. It's not working. As the Astros need to do something. So um, I don't know what the answer is. Is it Joey Loprofito? Is it, um, do they need to uh, play Victor Caratini more at first base? Th there's got to be some answer. And Joe Spada needs to really look at it. But there's been some hope recently. The Astros offense has been scoring some runs. This is one game. One game. But man, if the team can get as hot as Jose Altuve has been, that would be awesome. So um, we all know how bad Spencer Arigetti did in his last start. He gave up all those runs, uh, seven runs, I believe, in third inning against the Royals. But if you're thinking about what he did today, he looks so dominant in first inning. What is it about him striking out the first two batters in games? He comes in with all this adrenaline and comes in and, Urgh! And just comes in and pumps um, some iron and just strikes the guys out. We're talking about Acuna Jr. and Ozzy Albies. These are not ch uh, chumps out there. And he struck them out. So uh, I think that it's something that the Astros um, can be pumped about. Uh, he did throw, what, 39 pitches in the second inning. He gave up the true runs in the second inning. But Spencer Arigetti face the second best offense or maybe the first best offense in baseball. And he survived. He, he only threw what four innings, but still 87 pitches. He struck out five. He scattered four hits. He generated 15 whiffs on 46 swings. He got to a lot of two count uh, strike counts, but he still can't seem to get that put out, put out pitch. That's what he struggled with in uh, against the Royals. So as we see him develop at the major league level, you're going to see him uh, uh, get that out. Yes, the Astros did have a, yes, the risk is the issues. The Astros had, were one for seven with runners in scoring position today. Um, overall, they had, um, was it 10? I guess 10 runners left uh, individually. Yes, the team left on base was eight. Yes, it sucks. But that's the issue. I don't know if it's lineup construction or something, but something that happened that you don't really see that much is Alvarez went hitless. He didn't reach base. And I did the prize picks today, and I actually had him homering in this game. And um, let's just say I didn't win because he didn't homer. But um, I know you can't expect him to be the guy every day, but Dubon played center field. He got a hit today. Pena got another hit. Bregman got two hits and Altuve got three hits. You know, Altuve's OPS is 1198 right now. So there's not a lot broken with the team. 
Bregman still has a little bit of way to go, but his batting average is coming up 259, 662 OPS. He's coming back up. Uh, the Astros have a lot of positives. Their batting is not the issue overall. Yes, they strand runners on base, but I think that's lineup construction. So Joe Spotted needs to figure something out. Welcome back, Alex Bregman. He made some great plays. Maybe it was good that he kind of took the couple of days off with his illness. So um, right now, the Astros need to be putting up a maybe something on LinkedIn that says, we need some bullpen help. I don't know. I don't know if he could do that in the big leagues, but uh, we'll talk about uh, when's Justin Verlander going to return in second. And so we'll talk about can Houston rebound after the break. Hey guys, we all know how hard it is to find good people to work for you. Um, I know that uh, as in the teaching market right right now, it's hard to find the quality teachers out there. So that's why you got to get on LinkedIn right now. And so I want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It's a uh, it's sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. Also, uh, Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyers, surface key signals such as job ch changes or which accounts you should prioritize and uh, shows you hidden allies so you can um, find those buyers that are more likely to convert. So um, it's LinkedIn. You you might think it's it's mostly just for hi hiring people, but it's also for communication. So there's over 1 billion people on LinkedIn right now. So say, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first party data and enabling you to unlock conversations with people that matter. So right now you can try LinkedIn sales navigator and get a 60 day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That is linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60 day free trial. Get let LinkedIn sales navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on to get started today. Hey guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make this your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify. Wherever you listen to your podcasts, go and check out the Locked On Astros podcast. But we all know that the draft is coming up. Um, who are the Texans going to take? I know if the uh, how many picks do the Texans have? Well, you can go and check out the mock Locked On NFL mock draft. It's going to be live April seventeenth. On Locked On Sports today, you can. It's the only streaming, twenty four seven streaming platform on YouTube. Go and check it out, and you'll hear about who the, who they think the Texans are going to be picking and everything. So check them out. You can watch it on YouTube and also the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, where you can also find Brett and I on uh, the Locked On Astros podcast. And also, uh, don't forget to check out if you want more Astros content especially after every game, especially during weekends when we don't typically do podcasts. Go and check out Michael Connor uh, doing the Locked on Astros postcast after every game. Win or lose, Michael Connor will be doing a podcast. And uh, I know it's frustrating um, sometimes doing these podcasts, but we're here for you. It's not the end of the world. And uh, I know Michael Connor's there for you too as well. So let's go and continue talking about some good news. We kind of talked about the ugly, Josh Hader. What's going on with him? Why is he broken? I don't know. Is it the fact? Is it really the fact that he hasn't been coming in and non-safe situation? He's been coming in non-safe situations. Um, uh, Presley hasn't pitched since Friday. Could he have come in? But at the point that, I guess if it's the ninth inning, Hater was going to come in no matter what. But then once the game got out of control then you're not going to bring in Presley because uh, Presley is probably going to have to close if the Astros are going to be in a safe situation tomorrow. I guess that's the idea of why. So um, I don't know what to say about that. The Astros, it was a fun game, honestly, for the first, what, eight innings. It was a playoff game. It was the crowd was in it. You, you can hear the Braves fans. You can hear the Astros fans kind of 
uh, cheering him on and everything. But Spencer Arrigetti looked a lot better. He got rid of that man bun and uh, let his hair uh, flow out there. But I saw um, an article today on a certain site. I'm not going to say what site it was, but they said that Justin Verlander's start in Corpus Christi was alarming. Okay. Well, you have to look beyond the stats. Yeah, the stats, six runs and the, what, four innings or three innings, whatever it was, that was alarming. But it's the same point. There were some errors also. Um, it, it just There were some things that happened in a game that was out of his control. It wasn't – we don't care about the results in AAA, AA. We just want him to get his pitch count up. He got his velocity up to 92, 93. So the question is – when is he coming back? And uh, Joe Espada uh, talked to Verlander. He said he feels good. He feels confident. He wants to contribute, and he knows that we need him on a mound. We need his presence, and right now, he's right where he needs to be. And so, um, basically, he threw 78 pitches. There's been a lot of reports about, what is it, 77, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, they wanted him to get to 85 pitches, um, but he's going to throw a bullpen tomorrow. And then the plan for him is to start a game this weekend in Washington. So um, Verlander said whether he starts Friday at Washington will be up to the Astros. I do. Uh, Verlander said, I do feel like I'm ready to step on the mound again, whether that's for us or uh, for someone else. That's their decision. Of, co of course, they're not trading Justin Verlander, but that they mean in the minor leagues or for the Astros. So um, I think that uh, the Astros have been very, um, they've been very patient with him and they've given him time that way. If the, if, if the Astros get to the postseason, they'll have a very rested Justin Verlander. And so we'll see everything. He's healthy at this point. He's ready. So just let him go. So we should see Justin Verlander this weekend. And also, some good news is that we saw um, Luis Garcia, Lance McCullers, Penn Murphy, and Jose Arquiti were playing catch in the outfield. And also, Framer Valdez. So Framer Valdez feels like he's ready to come back uh, fairly soon. And like we talked about yesterday, the Astros uh, don't think that he'll need a rehab start. So he'll probably just jump back in a rotation. So... Uh, he played catch today, so that's good. Um, Jose Abreu did take batting practice today. It seemed like Jeff Bagwell was at the batting cage, maybe giving him some uh, tips. But it's going to take some time for Jose Abreu's bat to to kind of wake up. So the question is, I don't, I don't know if you saw the Athletic article, and I think Brett is going to do a separate podcast to really kind of take a deep dive into it. But one of the um, big pieces that was brought up, I think it was Ken Rosenthal that wrote this, but one of the big pieces that was brought up about why the Astros' uh, eighth straight trip to ALCS is um, problematic at this time was he brought up Josh Hader. He said that the Astros' decision to go after a closer versus going after uh, letting all those other relievers go while – it's one of the best closers in baseball. You didn't really fill the rest of your holes. It's like you, you filled this one hole, which is a great, well, it's supposed to be a great patch, but he struggled this year, but you have all these other leaks everywhere else. And so that's what, that basically what he was saying. So did he, uh, did the Astros really account for that? Also brought up was the rotation depth. And I brought this up what, when uh, Dana Brown said this. Remember when Dana Brown said that uh, basically if we have a bunch of guys that are similar to the other guys that are available, why go after them? Why pay money for the same production? Well, how about them apples? So far, the guys have not performed the same way. I mean, I know Blake Snell had his first start or second start or whatever it was. He didn't have a great start, uh, start but... I think the Astros could have added maybe Jordan Montgomery, uh, Michael Lorenzen, something like that. that. No matter what they did with their new teams, I don't care what they're doing with the new teams. Maybe with the Astros, they could have done better. So um, Hunter Brown, I don't know what's going on with him. Spencer Arigetti, 
he looks like he has a future, but um, then they brought up the non, the owner's GM uh, face. He said the signings, the Astros did, they brought, they said, bringing back Michael Brantley on a one-year deal uh, where he missed most of the season. Of course, the Rafael Montero signing. And then of course the Albertos, which is Jose Abreu signing. Uh, and then also he brought up the depletion of the farm system. We knew this. The Astros lost draft picks because of the cheating scandal. The Astros should have four more players in the Astros farm system, helping them right now. I'm not talking about Spencer Arrigetti. I'm talking about a pitcher much better than Spencer Arrigetti. Joey Loprofito, we should have a player much better than Joey Loprofito. That's what happened when uh, we lost those four players in the, um, the due to the cheating scandal. And also, of course, I know people don't want to hear it, but they lost a lot of leaders. Um, this was the fifth uh, point. Michael Brantley was the leader in the clubhouse. Also, they said that Martin Maldonado was a big leader in the clubhouse. And Hector Neris was a big leader in the bullpen. So all these... Are there say there are the reasons why the Astros return to the postseason or maybe the ALCS is questionable at this point. So now it's the Astros to kind of prove it that they can do it. Play better baseball. Maybe we'll see that tomorrow. Who knows? It's gonna be um, Hunter Brown versus uh, Lopez. We'll see how that goes, Ronaldo Lopez. Uh, but that's all I got for this edition of Locked On Astros podcast. Six and twelve Astros. You gotta do better than that. Uh, make sure you check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to us. Make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify. I'll see you tomorrow and Ghostros. Uh-huh.